Hey everybody, it's Jessica Burrell, and welcome to episode 22 of Everyday Inspiring Women. Um, a little project I started because I think my friends are so incredibly fascinating and they inspire me every day. And the more I'm getting into it, I'm just, it's been such an incredible experience for me and I hope that you're enjoying these interviews as much as I am. Today on the show, I have a new good friend, uh, Jackie Vanderlinden. Welcome, Jackie. Hey, thanks hey. for having me. Yeah, I'm so excited to chat today. So I'll do a quick intro of how Jackie and I met, and then I'll allow her to really get into the introductions and tell you more about herself. Um, I run a local meetup um, in my hometown called Tribe. And I work, my, my full-time, my corporate job is about an hour from my home. And I was feeling a real draw for community in that town as well. So I started looking for, you know, I was talking to people I knew to see if they had contacts that, um, of, of like-minded women. And I started doing some research myself and I was looking at Facebook events and, and I came across Jackie's um, event and she was doing a free meditation at a yoga clinic a yoga clinic, a yoga studio. And I thought, a free meditation? Like, I like this woman already. So she understands the value of meditation so much that she's like, please come and meditate. And I'm not, it's for free. <laughs> and so I reached out to her. I kind of needed 10 seconds of courage. To, and so reach out to this woman I have never met. I'm like, hi, let's be friends. <laughs> and she's like, okay, let's talk. We'll see. <laughs> and the first time we chatted, it was so funny because we both said we were talking to someone else before we got on the call. And we're like, I'm talking to this woman I've never actually met. Uh, but yeah, we're going to see how, where this goes. <laughs> and I think we were about 10 minutes in the conversation. And I'm like, I absolutely need Jackie to speak at our first tribe. And, um, and when I, when I asked her, she was like, yeah, I'm, I'm, I'm definitely interested. So I think that the power, there's so many, I feel like there's so many messages in that story for both of us to say like, mm -hmm. open to the universe and people are just going to be drawn to you and, and to be open and welcoming to that and to have that courage to one, ask someone to be their friend, <laughs> like very basically. Yes. And then yes. the courage to be like, okay, yeah, I'm open to this. Let's see where this goes. <laughs> And since then, we're friends on social, and I mean, everything you put, like you're putting out there, it just reconfirms that uh, those that we're just very, very like-minded, and um, I love so much of what you're putting out there. So, thank, thank you. you, thank you for saying yes to talking to me a couple months ago. <laughs> <laughs> well, thanks for reaching out. Thanks for reaching out. Yeah, I was. Um, yeah, I didn't know what to expect uh, when we when we chatted, but you know that idea of bringing women together to just share their authentic stories is so powerful, and you know it really kind of even boosted me in a different way that I wasn't even expecting when I had to actually sit down and put my story together and, and share it that night. It was way harder than I actually thought it was going to be. Um, and it was, it was healing for me and the feedback from it was, yeah, again, one of those pieces where you're like, okay, I, I know this was meant to be, I know this is the right thing because there were so many women that reached out from that group that night that were just like, you know, me too, like this, you know, I was struggling with the same thing and it was, uh, yeah, it was really an honor to come in and share my story. Um, oh, it was so good. Like, like all, every night, there, it's always different, different speakers, but it's like, that fills my cup personally in a way that nothing else does. And just, and holding that space for someone to share their story, it's, it's a beautiful process. And um, I always look for different ways to explain it to people because in the beginning, I'm like, just come. It's really good. You'll figure it out. <laughs> Not the best marketing, but <laughs> I'm refining it. <laughs> All good. So tell us a little bit more about yourself. Yeah. 
Um, so I really started in the health and fitness space about 15 years ago. I was working a corporate nine to five. I worked at a law firm and I was passionate about health and fitness. Um, if you met me in college, you would not recognize me today. I am a very different person. Um, and I just, yeah, I started dabbling into health and fitness, started as a personal trainer, yoga instructor and things like that. And, um, I mean, it's, it's just developed into so much more. Like now my work obviously focuses heavily around, um, simplifying your life, um, simplifying your health, uh, and truly taking care of yourself, mind and body. Um, you know, as I shared that night, I struggled with depression in my early years pretty heavily. And it's, and again, people that meet me now are very surprised to hear that because they see me as just like this person who's like putting out positive messages and putting out all the good. But, you know, part of the reason why I continue this work is to keep myself in that good space because it is easy to, to slip and, and to get into that very negative mind space. And if you've suffered from depression, you know that it can go downhill really fast and really far. And it's, and it's hard to get out once you're in that space. So that's honestly why I kept doing the work that I've been doing because I, you know, I, I've been blessed in my life. Like, you know, I didn't, I didn't suffer from depression because I was abused or I was, you know, I came from a bad home. Like I have amazing parents who love me. I have been loved every day of my life. I had like, you know, technically this perfect childhood. It, it wasn't anything like that, that catapulted me into a negative space. Sometimes good people just suffer. Mm. And, and, you know, and then once my sister uh, committed suicide. That was definitely a huge, um, a huge shift and obviously took me into a very bad, dark space in my life. But it, um, you know, looking back, I can see all of the lessons in, in wanting to live your life and wanting to, you know, talk to people about taking care of their mind and the important of mindset, not just to achieve goals and you know, entrepreneurship and business things, but just to, you know, I always come back to just loving your life. Every flipping day, you <laughs> need to love your life, even on the crappy days. You know, we are, you know, every guru out there, every like high level entrepreneur is always going to tell you that most of them will tell you that it comes from this place of gratitude. And so that's why, you know, that's why I started my podcast, which is, you know, less is more because I feel like we're stuck in a space that's full of stuff and full schedules and full, full lives that are very empty, right? They're busy lives that are very empty. Yes. And so I want now that's now like my business has obviously shifted from just teaching people to lift weights and eat their broccoli to teaching them to, you know, love themselves you know, go to therapy if you need it, to pray, to meditate, to, you know, take care of your body because it is a temple, but it's, yeah, my business has developed into so much more. And like I said, when I did the tribe event, it was this coming together. I had always told all these little bits and pieces of my life, but they were all very separate. And then bringing it all together at the tribe meeting was, um, like I can only say it was very healing for me as well. Oh, that makes my heart so happy that you shared that. Thank you. And, mm -hmm. and I've heard that echoed in other speakers' comments. And that makes me happy as the curator to be like, I'm providing so much value. You are providing so much value to the women who attend, but you get that value too. And, and, and it helps yeah. put your story together. It helps heal it. And it's almost like, I would, I would argue like, it's like a meditative practice, putting it together too, because yes. it's causing you reflection and you see your growth and you feel the gratitude and I have goosebumps all over right now, but it's, yeah. it's a process. Yeah. Oh, so it's so, it, it was, I'm always at a loss for words, which is surprising <laughs> if you know me. <laughs>
<laughs> That's all good. That's all good. Yeah. It, like I said, it was, um, you know, I thought this would just be a great way to, I mean, share my story because I do believe it's important, but I just was like, you know, I loved the idea of it, the idea of coming together and, and bringing women together and, you know, making this just like a fun, but inspiring night because sometimes I feel like, you know, we get together for drinks and all we're doing is, you know, complaining, right? Sometimes girls night just gets into a complaining mode and I'm like, uh, uh-uh, I don't, I don't, I don't really live that kind of vibe. Um, you know, I mean, we all need to vent. Don't get me wrong. But I loved the idea of really purposely switching that aspect to like girls night. I love that perspective. I'm totally taking that because you're 100% go ahead. hit the nail on the head there because agree. Like we go have some drinks and we shoot the shit and we complain about our jobs and our partners and our kids potentially. <laughs> and yes, mm-hmm. it's warranted every now and then, but it is, yeah, flipped it on its head. That's taking it. Thank you. That's, that's a good point. So tell me more about, like, I was thinking about you, um, like your business and, and it's like, and you're doing, you're incredibly successful and I love what you do. And I also notice um, in your social for this, this is just this month for sure. Tell us what you are focusing on for yourself um, for the month of August, because I think it's really important. Yeah. So my month of August is, August is generally kind of a slow point in my business. Um, and my, you I mean, I've actually dealt with self-esteem issues like my whole life. I think there's a misconception that achievers are super confident. And a lot of us who are, some achievers are confident. I'm not saying they're all like this, but I know personally, and I know a whole lot of women that are with me that, we are trying to prove something and we don't really need to be, and I'm working on that. Um, but I'm, I'm a go, go. Like I am, people are just like, how do you do all these things? Right? Like I worked a nine to five for 10 years plus ran my business part-time for like at least 10 years before I got to shift into doing this now, my business full-time. And you know, I've, you know, at some points I truly, drove myself into actual physical like adrenal fatigue mm-hmm. um, where I my hormones crashed like my mind was like pretty numb because I was just like going through the motions and getting things done and so this year um, you know it's been a couple of years since I quit and um, you know the beautiful part is that I get to stay home with my daughter in the summer she doesn't have to go into daycare and I just get to love her all summer and but this summer I was just like, okay, like I'm just feeling like I need to take care of me more than anybody else. And as I, I it's, it, and it's like this new levels kind of happening. I can feel this new, um, you know, there's just this new part that's kind of emerging in me. And so I'm focusing heavily on self care, but not just in like relaxing and bubble baths. And, and I, I did a whole episode on this because I think there's a huge misconception about self-care in that it's just about relaxing and having the wine and having the chocolate and just indulging where I'm like, no, like for me, self-care is about working out every damn day, sweating, even some way, shape or form. Like I can just like hit 10 minutes on that ugly ass bike back there. And <laughs> but I feel amazing afterwards. And I'll just like listen to an audiobook or a podcast and I'm just, I'm eating right. And, you know, I've, you know, I said this also in one of my other episodes where I was talking about that for so long, like I, I believe we are beautiful, all shapes, sizes. I don't believe that we need to abide by the scale, but I also believe that we're letting ourselves off easy sometimes And I was doing that. I was telling myself, I was like, I have a lot of energy. Like I'm doing good. Like I am not overweight. And why should I try to do any better? But I knew that there was a part of me that was like, I can do better. And I'm just, I'm limiting myself. Um, And so I got really purposeful on my health this month, on my, just fueling my mind on, you know, less sugar, (laughs) more water Mm -hmm. uh, and, and just sweating it out and taking care of myself. And it's been, it's been awesome. 
right? And I love to, again, I always fuel my mind when I get into exercise. So like right now I'm, I'm listening to like a bunch of like Brennan Bouchard and um, I actually heard this quote, I was listening to his podcast yesterday and this quote like struck me like smack in the face where I had to like stop the mic, stop mm. the audio, record the, I just recorded a video of myself saying the quote back because I needed to like remember it. Mm. And I'm going to screw it up and now if I try to say it. Um, but it's like, if you leave your time to randomness, then you're stealing your greatness. And I was just like, yes, that's, that's kind of what I had been doing. Um, as much as I had achieved all of these wonderful things, there was so much that I was still just kind of like randomly flying by the seat of my pants through. And I needed to get more intentional, more purposeful because there's so much more in me to give that I'm like, I just, I know I've been playing small. Other might, people don't see that. Um, they, you know, they see my presence online and they, you know, they see all these little things and they see me as a success, but I'm like, I know that I'm playing small and there's so much more. And it's just like, I feel like I'm in the cocoon and I'm just like ready to burst come fall. I just been like sitting with the goosebumps on my back right now. Yeah. Um, yeah. And I'm, because, you know, what story does for me is that hits, it hits me, right? When you're saying that, I'm going, you're, that's me. Like, I feel you in so many ways. And, and I'm right at that exact, I feel like I'm at with you in that point, because I was talking to a lot of people. And we did a vision board workshop in Chatham with um, just this incredible woman who runs a studio and does vision boards. And we put our vision boards together and that's, ex and lovingly, she says, I don't think you're dreaming big enough. And I'm like, mm. and, she, and, and after she's like, did, like, I think we're close enough that I could say that to you. And I'm like, of course you can it, but you're 100% right. And I have it sitting across from me right now. And I'm, and so it's like, I have like, i People would look at you or even me, I, I suppose, and say, mm -hmm. you're doing so many things. And I'm, and I'm like, I am so limiting myself. It's, it's crazy when I wake up and I'm going, I know I could be playing bigger. And um, I think that, um, and it's my opinion, but like that your self-care piece, I think I couldn't, you would articulate mm -hmm. it so well when you're like, you are building this foundation for the fall when you're just going to explode like like yeah. total next level shit like it's feel it so i can yes that's all i'm gonna say i'm like preaching i got well, my hands <laughs> yeah i love it yeah all all the preach hands right preach hands emoji um totally. but that's yeah I, and and that was my piece is that i just i kind of and it was it you know and i you know shout out to rachel hollis and the girl wash your face because that's been my like I've just been like crush like total like girl crushing on her um, because again when I was reading her book like you know she's like youngest of the fam like of a fairly large family you mean she had a bit of like toxic parents so I didn't identify that and then she goes into like losing her brother to suicide and all these things and I just remember like reading that book and being like oh my god this woman is me but you know as she um, kind of like goes in the book where she says like when she's trying to quit Diet Coke and she's just like what if I just didn't break this promise to myself mm -hmm. and I was like that's it I have been breaking promises to myself for way too long when it comes to my health and fitness because it was good enough and you know it's that whole idea of letting go of the good to go for great mm, and yeah. and so that's what that's what August has been uh, all about for me is letting go of the good and going for great. Well, and what a fascinating concept, especially as moms, um, you know, and business owners, because we really are great at putting every, so many things before ourselves. Um, and, you know, the, flipping that on its head. And the, I feel like when we can really focus on the, on that going, the value it's giving me for my self care doesn't make me feel guilty anymore because when I put that emphasis on myself, I can serve in such a higher form, everything else. Oh, for, for sure. For sure. Um, 
you know, I, I chatted about, um, again, at the tribe meeting about, you know, the pivoting point for me with, with my daughter and, and wanting to, to know that at that point I needed to go to the next level, which, you know, was her telling me, you know, don't cry today at work. That was, and I would say that was her version of have a nice day because that's all she saw. She saw me cry on the way to work when I dropped her off and she saw me cry when I came home and she saw, you know, even if I held it together, like as soon as I'd pick her up, like a lot of times she'd be hanging out with my parents after school, she gets off the bus there. Again, my parents have been amazing. And, um, you know, they would just ask me very innocently, just like, how was your day? And I would just break down bawling. And, you know, our kids are such a mirror of what, where we need to focus. Mm. And, but I also, I got a lot of, I got a lot of slack on people, especially when I was working full time and doing my business part time. And, and even now, because I travel more and I was gone a lot and people, you know, and, you know, people who love me, they're just like, why aren't you just happy? with like the good enough and I'm not like again it's it's not that I was ungrateful for my nine to five like I had a I had a great job like and it's not that it was that horrible but when things are that unresting you it's it's not it's I don't feel like it's even a choice anymore and so yeah being a mama is I think one of the biggest blessings you can have and and so I think we need to give ourselves, especially the moms, a whole lot of self-forgiveness in still wanting to pursue our dreams and still wanting to like, you know, yeah, leave the family so you can go do something for yourself. Like going to the gym isn't selfish. Like it's only selfish if you're like legit not taking care of your family still. But you I mean, I, my, my daughter just like, she's like, Hey, let's do jumping jacks. And I'm like, fantastic. She's going to be like the healthiest kid ever. I love it. Right. Like tonight I'm like, do you want chicken? And she's like, no, we'll just have salad. And I'm like, perfect. <laughs> right. I was like, I just want to keep What kind of kid are you? She was, she was now down on Reese's pieces last night. So don't, don't, I don't want to put this on like some sort of pedestal. Um, she still loves sugar, but I, we are, uh, that example. And so if you, I, and that's why I always look at it. It's the way I talk when I talk to my husband and you know, about anything in a relationship or anything, I'm like, I want to teach her. I want to show her what can be. I don't want to limit her because I limited myself because I realize, you know, um, just my parents, you mean different mindset, different, you know, John, like different age group, right? It's a very, it was a very different life and having a good nine to five was like winning the lottery. And so my parents didn't understand when I first quit my job, it was a hard struggle. Um, and because I'm so close with my parents, I still was looking for that approval, but in the end I just had to go, I just had to quit. And, um, you know, my dad year, you know, it was probably like six months later. I remember him looking at me or sitting at the kitchen table and I'm saying, he's like, you're so much happier now. And, you know, it was then that I I realized that he saw, he saw what he didn't see six months before when I was, you know, in tears at the table and needed to quit. But all he saw was he didn't want me to struggle financially. I mean, that's the parent's way. Right. And, uh, but yeah, I look at, I look at the sacrifices my parents did. Like my parents both worked full time and ran a farm. Like we're all making sacrifices. We just have to choose what we feel is best and and go with it. And again, be forgiving to ourselves that we're not perfect and we're going to make mistakes. But I think if we go into each day with proper intention, this is why I love meditation. If you go into it with proper intention at the end of the day, no matter how bad a day it went, you can at least be at peace with it. I love that. I'm and I feel the same way. I'm like my parents, you know, sometimes my mom will say, oh, like, she feels guilty because of certain things. And I'm like, you have nothing to oh. feel guilty for. Like you did the Agreed. best you could with the tools that you had. I don't begrudge anything. I, cause I'm similar to you. Like, like charm, like someone's like, someone just used the term, like having a charmed life. 
I really did. My parents and my parents like are still together. They love each other. Like yeah. I'm very blessed. Um, you know, but I'll talk about how I parent or how I choose to parent and those sorts of things. And my mom will go into feeling guilty. Like, and I'm like, yeah. no, you, you are amazing. You did, you do the best. And I think it's the same for us. Right. Cause we're doing the best we can as a parent with the tools that we have. And I think you and like, we're both like a seeker, right? Like we're look like the knowledge, mm-hmm. we're like learning and growing and, um, and, and I think because of that, that helps translate into how we parent and how we show up and as a, mm-hmm. as a daughter and a partner and a, and a parent, but our kids will do the same thing to us and they're going to evolve. But I think we're just doing the best oh, we yeah. can to put those tools in place for them and set those examples so that they are able to do, to grow and teach us continually. <laughs> That's, That's always my hope. hope. I, 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 I say that about Claire all the time is that I just hope that she's smarter and even, you know, more brilliant than I am. That would make me, you know, I mean, and in the end, it isn't smarter and whatever, but like, if she is just like, again, like loves her damn life, I don't care if she's dirt poor, but as long as she's got like food on the table and a roof over her head and loves her damn life, I'm okay with it. Like, um, yeah, it's, and that's, that's, that was my big takeaway is that I, that's why I let go of my nine to five because I realized it wasn't about having the, uh, having the, you know, steady paycheck and all the steady, you know, things that I thought I wanted and from the outside world is what tells us that we need. Um, I realized that I needed to really follow my heart and my backup plan was that I can find another job to go to and hate if I'm literally going to lose my house. Right. I was like, uh, you know, I am like, yes, it was a good job, good pay, all of these things. But I'm like, you know what? People survive on way less than this. And if this really, 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 like I'm young enough that I'm like, if this really doesn't work, you know, whatever. I just start something new. Like I'm a capable person. I am very fortunate. Um, you know, I mean, my husband works full time, so he gets a huge shout out for, you know, keeping some stability in the house. But it was amazing once I took the leap, how even financially that abundance came in. Can you, can you talk about that a little bit personally? Cause I'm super interested because I'm in this space that you were in where, you know, I have a full-time corporate job. I have my side business that I'm incredibly passionate about. And, you know, that moment that you decided, like, how did that feel to I, just make that decision that you were quitting and then to, and when you quit, like when you were like your last day, do you remember, like, do you remember how you felt? I know it was a little, oh, bit, a little bit ago. Yeah. yeah. So I had really in my heart decided to quit like a full year before I quit. Right. I would clear, it was summertime when Claire gave me that big, again, like I say, smack in the face kind of moments where she's like, you know, don't cry at work. And all I can think of is like, this is all she's going to remember of me when she's older is this mom who had a, you know, good job, but like was miserable. And so that was my thing. I said, next summer, I won't put her in daycare. I was like, that's my goal. I don't know how the hell I'm going to totally make this happen. You mean I already had part of my business. So I knew there was ways to make more money, but it was hard with, you know, obviously 40 less hours a week that I was dealing with. But it's amazing when you, when you, and we talk about this in any sort of like business or anytime we talk about motivation, it's your why, like why you want something is the be all and end all. And so my why just finally grew big enough to outweigh every negative piece that said I couldn't. So everybody that said I was crazy for entertaining the idea of quitting, um, you know, everyone that said it was like stupid that I'm ditching the pension and then, you know, you know, the benefits and all of the good things that I got from this job and my private office and my air conditioning and, you know, all of the things that people would kill for. Um, it, it just got big enough. So it was a year in planning. It wasn't, 
um, you know, people I know from the outside, because I didn't share that, you know, obviously with my employer at the time. <laughs> um, but, you know, they knew, they saw all the things I was doing. So I don't think they were totally surprised when I left. Um, but it was a year later. And uh, I, I remember it just came down to, um, I was planning on quitting at the end of like June, because that's when school's done. And, and it was actually like mid-May. Um, and it was just like a time off request that I had submitted and got denied. And I was just like, I am so done of other people telling me my time. And I just always said, I'm like, I'm unemployable, really. Like I, I, you know, I believe in structure and rules. Like I, everyone calls me like the prude. Cause like, I am like, I like to follow a set way and I believe in rules and order. Um, but at the same time, there was a part of me that was like, no, I am so done with someone telling me when I, these vacation hours that I have banked, I am done with someone telling me when I can actually take these. And I'm done living for those moments of vacation days. I'm, I'm, I'm done with it. And um, so I went home crying at lunch. And it just happened to be my husband's like um, Friday off. He, his schedule, he gets the random Friday off here and there. And I went home and I'm like in tears and I did, I just, he just looked at me and he's like, just give your notice. Like, what are you waiting for? And it was, you know, cause it was like an extra couple of paychecks and I was trying to save money and, and all of these things. And I just went, you know what? You're right. Like a month isn't going to make or break anything. And so I went back in and I just, I gave my notice that day and, um, and, and once I left, I remember driving home the day I quit. And I cried the whole way home. And it was like this, you know, grief of leaving like a whole life behind. And it was like this also like huge relief of what I let go of the heaviness of it. Um, And it was a whole, you know, a whole lot of scared (laughs) in there too. (laughs) But honestly, like it was one of like, again, it's like, you know, those moments in your life that stick in your brain and I can visualize literally a specific spot on the road on my way home and just being like, I, it's, it, you know, I took the leap. Um, it's, you know, it's fail or fly and I'm not one to give up. I am definitely a solutions person. Um, I believe there's an answer. There's a way there's sometimes it's not always the way we want. And sometimes it's harder and sometimes it's longer than it needs to be. But I believe that there is a light. There is a light at the end of the tunnel. Um, we just got to find it. And so I just, I just kind of felt like I was literally driving into this whole new life. It was very, very surreal. That's awesome. I love it. That, I, I think that's a perfect way to explain it too. <laughs> Thank you. Thanks for sharing that. I appreciate it. I think, um, so what's coming up for you? So now, you know, you're, um, you started a podcast, like, I like themes. Are there themes coming up for you over the next little while? And I know self-care is a big theme, like you said, for this month. And I feel like, um, leveling up like that, that next stage of growth for you, like you said, in the fall. So what are you working on right now? And over the next few months? Yeah. So, I mean, I'm, you may have launched the podcast and I kind of, you know, purposely did it during these summer months, um, so that I could get this swing of this whole podcast thing. Um, definitely the theme that's coming up and that, like I said before, that less is more, um, I'm eventually going to be working on an online course that'll be available. That's really going to be focusing around, around the less is more kind of concept of, um, like decluttering your space, detoxing your body and de-stressing, right. Of really like this, it's like, the, it's, it's D-Day, right. Yeah. It's just like, it's all okay. this de-stressing, detoxing kind of thing, decluttering. Um, because I don't believe one thing's going to fix everything for people, but I just know that if you can get a few of these key pieces into play, 
you can do whatever you, it, it is just like, it is the fuel to your fire. And I've seen this over and over again, like with my coaching clients and things like that. I've seen how when I lead them through this, um, it, it works and, and they just feel amazing and they have the energy and they have the motivation. And so I want to bring this into a bigger way. Um, online courses is brand new to me. So that's definitely going to be a new, uh, avenue for me. Um, but honestly, like tribe really kind of inspired me to like share my voice in a bigger way. Um, you know, I've been playing around with a podcast for at least a full year in my mind. Um, and it was funny because one of the girls that I met at tribe that night, um, we were sending messages back and forth because I was purchasing something from her business and we were messaging back and forth. And I was at the studio, I was at one of my yoga studio at the yoga studios that I teach at. And I'm just like sending her messages. I think I was talking oils and she's talking like her products and we were just kind of going back and forth because we need to grab stuff from each other. And she's like, Oh my gosh. She's like, I can hear like the gentle music playing in the background. She's like, have you ever thought about a podcast? And I was like, that's hilarious. Cause I said, it's literally like launching in a few weeks. Um, and that, like I said, that was kind of the launch of my podcast is that everyone's like, Oh, I just wish I could take your voice with me. Um, which I think everyone has a problem with their own voice. <laughs> I don't know if it was just me, but it took me a long time to get um, okay with my own voice. Um, and so, yeah, it, all these, like I said, like try really just kind of inspired me to get bigger with my voice. So that's definitely been a big theme for me is speaking up for the pieces that have been inside that I've been kind of sheltering. Yeah. Um, to, you know, like Brene Brown says, just like being super vulnerable because that is such a powerful message. And, you know, I think that's what the epitome of tribe really is, is about being vulnerable and sharing our story. And, and so, yeah, so there's definitely lots more, um, in the work, but, uh, yeah, definitely more is going to be happening on the podcast. I'm going to have some interviews on my own, um, on the podcast and yeah, eventually, um, a new, uh, a new course coming out. I am in the midst of a rebrand. Um, my website should be all updated and finished, I think by the end of the month ish, if not into September, um, which feels really good. You mean, it's not what we call like an income producing activity, <laughs> but, um, but at the same time, it was like, again, this new level me coming out. Um, and I needed my brand to, to really reflect, reflect that. So it's a lot lighter. It's a lot, um, a lot more simplified, a lot softer colors, things like that. So it's uh, gorgeous. Yeah. It's really exciting. It's gorgeous. I love it. When you were posting going, yeah. my old brand, this is my new brand. I'm like, like leaps and bounds. Like it felt like growth to me too. Like, and yeah. And, and you like your new brand is you to me, like your old brand, it's because I only know you in this space. So the, I mean, yeah. not that it didn't resonate, but it was like so much more you. I, yeah, 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 it's beautiful. Yeah, my girlfriend does a, a great job. Um, she has, it's, you mean, technically her whole, um, her business, she has a whole branding, building your website kind of thing. Um, and so she is kind of the master <laughs> behind my website. Um, and you know, she, she set it up really well where, you know, I mean, just to, you know, use Pinterest to just like gain. And she's like, you know, don't think about all of, don't think about what you think you want, just like go with what you're drawn to. And, uh, you know, I think that's a huge piece in whatever we're doing, whether it's branding or whether it's our life, it's like the things that your mind keeps going to you, and like when things are quiet or like, it was like, at, you know, when I worked on at five, it was just like, I couldn't get my mind out of my business. Like I said, like in the end, I was not a great employee because like my brain wasn't, I wasn't in it. Like I was in the beginning. And so, um, you know, I think with anything, it's like when we really dive into trusting our heart, but making the plan to make all of these little dreams and, you know, aspirations or whatever they are, big or small, um, when we really follow our heart and then put action into that, oh man, women are unstoppable. We really are. It's magic. It is pure mm -hmm. magic. I love it. If we can grow humans, we can do anything. Damn right.
Yeah. Yes. That's, that's how I go. <laughs> I love it. I think I could, let's like, let's talk all day, but I, know. <laughs> I feel like not everyone would be as interested as we are to sit here and hear us chat, chit chat all day. So I want, I'm gonna, okay. I want to wrap it up, but I don't want to wrap it up, but we're going to wrap it up. I was thinking, like, I love, you kind of mentioned, you know, Brene Brown and Rachel Hollis and the podcast you're listening to. Do you, I find this question hard, but like, do you have like one book or like a motivational quote or something that you really lean on that always grounds you or guides you in the right direction? Um, One book that I love, and I get actually asked this question quite a bit, depending on profiles that people are looking for for me this yeah. uh, you know favorite books and i'm a book like audio audio books are my jam mm-hmm. um obviously i love my books i have a whack of them behind me um but one book that i absolutely love and definitely shifted me into this um less is more piece is a book called essentialism um by greg McEwen, i believe and it's uh, it's so it's essentialism but like the sub quote is the disciplined pursuit of less. And that book really, um, really kind of shifted my thinking about like, what's important, what is truly important, not like expectations from others important, versus all the other junk that I'm just throwing into the schedule. Um, there's that book. And then, I mean, that one definitely is, I would say my, my key one. And then there's the other, there's another book and I can't remember who it's by, but it's called the one thing. Mm, okay. And I cannot remember who it's by right now, but that book, it's the same kind of idea of like focusing in pretty much because that was the biggest shift for me and actually achieving success is that like once I quit my day job, I just I focused in on the areas that, you know, I was a passionate about that, you know, brought in income. I mean, I definitely have a few different areas in my business. Um, and, but I just focused in on what I knew worked mm-hmm. and yeah, I was, I was blown away by what I actually achieved, um, in these past two years. I I've, I've surprised myself. And like I said, now that I know that technically I've still even been playing small these past two years and I have this next level to go. I'm like, damn, watch out. I don't even know what I'm going to (laughs) do. I can't even wait. Bring it. Yes. Go in that space. I love that. I'll post both the books in the, in the show notes for that for you as well. So yeah, they're awesome books. Okay. I'm excited. I have an audible credit burning a hole in my pocket and it's like, it's not that I don't want to use it. I have like six books and I just can't decide. So I'll have to check. Yeah. So how can people get in touch with you? And I'll post, I'll post all your contact information in the notes as well, but um, how can people reach you? Um, Pretty well. um, Instagram, Twitter, Facebook. um, Do you find me at, at like if you just search holistic Jackie, my, it's my uh, handle for all social media platforms that I'm on. And then my website is holisticjackie.com. That's, you know, those are definitely the best ways to reach me and to stay up to date on, um, on what's going, I mostly hang out on Instagram, um, but everything links over to Facebook. So, uh, that's probably the best way to truly see, like I said, my, my website's in a rebrand. So if you go to it today, not going to be the best <laughs> of, it's not gonna be a true version of me. Um, yeah, check back and it'll probably actually be down for a week while they really change everything over. Um, so, um, but yeah, at, just find holistic. If you search holistic Jackie, then, uh, I should pop up. Awesome. Keeping it simple. Thanks, Jackie. Thank, Thank you. Oh, uh, thanks so much for chatting with me. This was, um, awesome. I really loved hearing your stories and connecting with you. And I am truly excited to see what's coming this fall. Like I'm on the edge of my seat. So looking forward to that. Enjoy the rest of your summer. We'll, we'll be in touch, but we'll chat soon. Yes. Yes. Sounds good. Awesome. Bye. Bye Bye-bye.